today. I wanted to talk about, again, capacitors. I know we talked about capacitors before, but this time I wanted to talk about the star capacitor. The star capacitor. Now, capacitors, you have the run capacitor and you have the star capacitor, which are typically used on a single phase compressor or a single phase fan. And in another video is explaining how you get a different sine wave because of the capacitor and that helps you shuffle the magnetic field around so you can rotor can actually rotate. But why do we have a star capacitor and why do we have a run capacitor and why and, and why are they used? The star capacitor is used basically when we're starting up. That's why it's called a star capacitor. Just like the run capacitor is used while the unit is running. So it's going to stay energized. It's going to stay working as long as the fan motor is rotating. And while it's running, that's why it's called a run capacitor. Now, the star capacitor, it's only going to be used when it starts up. But one thing I wanted to point out right away is that the star capacitor is only used when we start up, but we take it out of the circuit at 75% of the motor speed. Once the motor gets up to 75% of the speed, it gets taken out. And the question is, what takes it out? Well, that's going to be this right here. That is your potential relay. This potential relay has three main connections on it. They're going to be labeled 1, 2, and 5. Those are the main connections on your potential relay. There's all these wires going to it and so on, but regardless, those are the two that you're going to have to pay attention to. We said before in a previous video that you're going to have your, your, your motor. You're going to have a wire coming out like this, another one coming out like this, and then you're going to have another one that is going to be coming out like this. Now this one here, typically that's going to be your brown wire, and that's going to be for your start winding. Because we said before that you're going to have your start winding, and then you have your run winding. One of the ways that you know which one is which is because the start winding has high resistance. But another way is if you have a fan motor that this is going to be a brown wire. We said before that typically you're going to have, let's say for example, L1 that feeds your common connection. Then you're going to have L2 like this that's going to feed your run winding and the same line that feeds the run winding is going to come over and is going to feed your capacitor like this. So here we would have my run capacitor. This is like we have talked about before but now you have the star capacitor. We want to put that star capacitor into play. As we said a minute ago the same line that feeds the run winding is going to come out and is going to feed your capacitor, your star capacitor like this. And your capacitor is going to have to come down and is going to feed your start winding. So now this capacitor here, what's going to end up happening is we're going to take this capacitor out of the circuit at approximately 75% of the motor speed. So these contacts are going to have to open. These contacts will open and once it takes, once these contacts open, it takes this out of the circuit, the run capacitor stays running. So what is going to take this out? Well, what takes this out is going to be the potential relay. Your potential relay, first of all, what is in a relay? In a relay, we have nothing more than a set of contacts and a coil. So these are our contacts here. The coil is going to come up like this and then we have the coil like this and then this is going to be connected to the common connection right there. So this makes up your relay. Now on here we're going to have connection number one right here. This is going to be connection number two and this one here is going to be connection number five. One, two, and five. So one 
is going to be hooked up basically to the capacitor and to the contacts. Number two is going to be connected to the start winding and at the same time to one side of the coil. The other side of the coil is going to be connected to number five and five goes to common. When we start the system, what happens? We send power through L, power L1, and power through L2. Once this happens, we send power to the run winding, the run capacitor, and the start capacitor are going to send power down to the start winding and give this start winding a boost. That's basically what a capacitor does. It gives it a boost also. So now, as this starts up, and the motor picks up speed because now we have a rotor in here and the rotor is going to be rotating. Once it gets up to 75% of the motor speed, this coil is going to energize. This coil energizes and it will open these contacts right here. Once it opens the contacts, then it takes this capacitor out of the circuit. It takes the capacitor out of the circuit and we're only running on our run capacitor. When the motor shuts back down, when the system is satisfied or for whatever reason, then the motor shuts down, everything goes back to its normal position, which means that this is going to be closed. As soon as the motor starts back up again and the motor reaches 75% of the motor speed, that will open up. Once this opens, it takes that capacitor completely out. Now, what opens it? As this rotor rotates, it induces a magnetic field back into the start winding. Because of that, the counter electromotive force, or the CEMF as it's called, will energize this coil. Once it energizes this coil, it takes that out, and this coil stays energized until we shut the system back down. But this is what they call your potential relay. And on this one, we're going to have the two capacitors, the run capacitor and the start capacitor. If either of these two go bad, typically your motor is not going to stay running for long, or it may not even start. So it's something to keep in mind. And how do we test capacitors? With a capacitor tester. We must have a capacitor tester. One of the differences between a run capacitor and a start capacitor is that the star capacitor is going to be much, much higher microfarads. I've seen them anywhere around 150 microfarads up to somewhere in the 400s microfarads. I have seen those like that. These typically down here, depending on what it is, if it's a fan motor, it could be a 5, 7.5, 10, 15. Just the other day I saw it one that was 20 on a fan motor. But a compressor, you're looking at 30, 35, 45 microfarads. So it just all depends. But another thing you want to look for is that on the star capacitor, these, when you first see them, they're going to be black. They are black. Why are they black? Because they're made out of this material called Bakelite. It's a very, very good insulator. And because it holds so much energy, they want to make sure that you have a good insulator in the casing so the casing is well insulated. The run capacitors typically they're made out of aluminum. They're made out of aluminum. There's a lot to say about capacitors but this is just a short little lesson on your star capacitors, what takes it out and so on. Before I go, let me go ahead and ask you this question. This symbol right here. What is that symbol right there? This symbol and this symbol look very much alike. The difference is that this does not have a line and this one does. This one typically we could say that this is going to be your high pressure switch. But this one, this is going to be your centrifugal switch. That's your centrifugal switch. The centrifugal switch is going to open as this motor speeds up. As the motor speeds up, this switch opens up at approximately 75% of the motor speed. So what they do is instead of using a potential relay, what they do is they use a centrifugal switch. 
with a centrifugal switch, they take this capacitor out of the circuit. So basically what we would have, we would have, let's say, L2 would feed one of the capacitors like this, and it would feed the other capacitor like this, and then here we would have the centrifugal switch. Both of these would be going over to my start winding like this. At 75% of the motor speed, 75%, this will open and take the start capacitor out of the circuit. The run capacitor will stay energized. But regardless, the same line that feeds the run winding, the same line that feeds the run winding feeds the capacitors, whether they're using a potential relay or whether they are using a centrifugal switch. And the other line, in this case L1, goes hooked up to common. I hope this helped. Again, my name is Julio with Aircon Academy. Please uh, follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you have any suggestions for other videos, please let me know and I'll see what I can do about getting them online. Thank you.